Eric motherfucking Devendorf. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure. For people who might be watching this, who are not familiar with what you did earlier this year, late, late last year, this series that we're doing right now is it's really talking to people who have made a big impact in the local restaurant community. You know, I'm sure most people know you for obviously the stuff you got going on now. You're on the ACC network. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm trying to dabble, get into the broadcasting side of things, yes. You got your podcast. Yep. Yeah, you got a radio show. Yep. Right? Yep. People know you from, obviously, SU basketball and, uh, you know, that shot that should have counted. It worked out. I'm glad. I'm actually <laughs> glad it didn't count because we, we wouldn't even be talking about it. So it, it worked out. How it was yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the longest overtime. That was the most overtimes in uh, Big East tournament history, correct? Six? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's a, it was the greatest college basketball game of all time. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to put my stamp on it right now. You yeah. Know, like stamp of approval. <laughs> but no, it was just an amazing game to be a part of. And then, you know, what greater fans to, um, you know, support you than Syracuse. This community is is like no other. It's special. What was it like? Uh, I mean, so you're originally from Michigan, right? Yeah, Bay City, Michigan. Yeah, so what, 100 miles outside of Detroit. Yeah, probably it's yeah, probably about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, hour yeah. And 20 minute drive. Yeah. So what was that like growing up, playing ball? I mean, when did you? Wh what age did you have some sort of uh, idea of? Hey, I think I want to do something with this. It was early, man. It was, I, I, you know, my dad put it in me like early that passion for the game. I remember being outside playing with him. Uh, you know, six, seven years old. And um, I remember, you know, starting playing in the Y leagues, you know, yeah. probably eight, nine years old. And, and I was the kid who had the ball, you know, to and from school, <laughs> you know, at lunchtime, I was, I was out there with it. I remember, you know, in school, my teachers would get mad at me because I would just always write basketballs on the top of my test, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like NBA and stuff like that. So I was, I was obsessed with it early on at an early age. And, um, you know, I was thankful that my dad, you know, he, he introduced it to me. Um, and I kind of carried it on and, um, you know, always growing up playing with older guys. You know, I remember being in the parks, I was, you know, Bay City's little, so it's, you know, 30,000, but we were surrounded um, by some good basketball, you know, Saginaw, Flint, yeah. um, the Tri-City areas, and then Detroit wasn't too far. Um, and it was a lot of talent. So I was fortunate to be able to always play with guys better than me hmm. uh, when I was young. Um, and, and that really just um, drove me even more to kind of get better and, and the passion was already there. So, um, but yeah, it was something that stayed with me. And, you know, high school, I ended up, uh, you know, being a McDonald's All-American and, yeah. um, you know, kind of having my choice of what school I wanted to go to. Um, and then, you know, eventually it was, it was there. At first it was Michigan State. Well, it wasn't really. It, it was Michigan State. So, you know, back then all the, if you were one of the top players in the state, um, you wanted to either go to Michigan or Michigan State. Okay. You know, and, and I actually committed my sophomore year to Michigan State. Wow. Um, but it happened that 2003, the national championship year that, that yeah. we won it, Syracuse played at Michigan State in the Breslin Center. Hmm. I was at the game. <laughs> you know, so I, you know, I'm watching G Mac and Mello and Hakeem and, and Coach Beheim, how they play. And I'm like, I turned to my, at the time, my AAU coach who was, who was helping me out uh, with my recruitment. And I, I turned to him and I'm like, I think we got to see what's going on with this with Syracuse, man. Like I just, you know, that was me. That's how I played. I was a guy who I like to get up and down and, and, and play at a fast pace um, and play with freedom. Hmm. And, and coach did that for his players. And I remember that next week, call he called up at Syracuse and um, and they came down to Detroit where I had practice at and offered me a scholarship. Wow. That week, and it was it was Coach Baham and Coach Weaver. Um, coach Weaver is now the general manager of the Detroit Pistons. So. Hmm. Um, yeah, from then on, I was, I, I was Cuse, man. So I'm glad that I went to that game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a similar climate. So you had that go, you know, it wasn't probably so, too much of a the shock. Same. It was, I mean, at times I feel like we had more growing up. I oh, remember yeah. missing school and, you know, r literally climbing out of the snow, <laughs> uh, you know, going, going, walking back home. So yeah, it was no big deal. Winters are easy. What age is that set in? I mean, you know, your, your passion for it, playing with your dad, knowing that's what you want to do, but what age is it kind of set in where it's like, all right, you know, my talent, my ability is kind of getting there and uh, I can kind of see a path of how to get there. What age is that set in where it's like, okay, this is, this is maybe a little bit more real. You know what? Like I said, early on, man, yeah. like I remember, you know, fourth grade. So what's that? Eight years old, nine yeah. years old. I was playing AAU basketball with eighth graders. Oh, you wow. Know? So like, I remember hmm. elementary school, you know, it was funny. We had like we had at lunch. We'd have the gym, so we'd yeah. everybody was shoot and play. And I just remember one time I was shooting free throws, and I had to be 
I made like 100, 110 in a row or something like that. And I remember the whole gym, you know, was just sitting down for that whole lunch hour. It was just watching me, watching me. So I like, I knew early on, like, all right, I'm, I'm better than everyone else. You know, I remember playing in those leagues, getting, you know, I'm getting, I'm scoring all the points. You yeah. know, I'm doing so. Uh, I guess that that just gave me the confidence to keep going. And then, like I said, playing with those older kids and still holding my own, yeah. you know, fourth grade playing with eighth graders. You know, I was still scoring, holding my own. And, um, and and I remember, you know, middle school, you know, seventh, eighth grade, you know, the high school coaches started to like, all right, who, who is this guy? And, um, you know, hmm. freshman year I was playing at first four games. I played JV. I averaged like 48 my wow. first four games in JV. <laughs> get moved up the fifth game to varsity make the make the game winning shot my first game moved up and then I think like my third game I had like 35 so that that was when it started that freshman year now I got you know this the summer teams coming at me hey you want to play with us and Hmm. um it kind of you know once I started getting on the summer scene and and playing against you know nationally yeah um it kind of took over like schools just started coming in and I remember um you know coming home from school the mailbox would be like it'd be like 50 letters every day you wow. know, I, I still keep it. My mom has it in her in her room, hmm. um, in like a big case. It's you know thousands of letters. So, wow. it was a pretty awesome experience for a young kid to be able to go through. Like especially for in my town, Bay City, like we we had never had a Division One basketball player. You hmm. know, you know, in any sport. You know what I mean? Let yeah. alone basketball. I think football we had. Um, we actually had a couple maybe in football, but not a lot, man. So yeah. it was it was a lot of attention, and and that's what kind of led to me kind of going. Um, out of state in my last year I went to Oak Hill which is a top top notch basketball school my teammates were Kevin Durant who's now yeah. you know, obviously one of the greatest basketball players ever Taiwan Lawson Jamont Gordon so it was like nine division one players on that team hmm. so but early on it was you know I developed it and then that took me to um, you know greater heights going to Oak Hill and, and eventually Syracuse you grow up with that kind of competitiveness in you I always had a chip on my shoulder because like I was always the, the young kid going in there playing knocking me down who's this young who's this young kid coming in here trying to you know and it, it was when I played people were talking so that's where yeah. it comes from I'm I'm talking out there you know I'm, yeah. I'm emotional I'm passionate and it comes out of my play it comes out of my talk you know and but that's just part of the game like that's how it was like I didn't take it personal like when they're growing up it's like you know, when you make a bucket, you tell him, he telling you about it. If he block you, he's he going to let you know. And that's just, <laughs> that was just normal to me. I didn't think anything of it. So, yeah, it was instilled in me right away. Like, I had that chip on my shoulder. I had, it was, they call it now, they call it having that dog in you. You know what I mean? <laughs> having that, you know, having that heart in your chest just to go ahead and play fearless. That was, early on, it was put in me for sure. That's important when you're, com- when you're competing in a saturated game. Yeah. Especially, you know, you're, you're there at that school, you got some of these teammates that right are going on to be I mean Kevin Durant for God's sake right yeah yeah. not only that but you're coming in in the guard position right so you know you're I mean you're in a a heavy 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 position yeah and uh you got to you know figure out your way to make yourself known get out there obviously make those plays but you got to you got to make your presence known to some of those people absolutely and and I always kind of you know I think that's what separated me you know because I was always going to play as hard as I can I yeah. was always going to play with, with fearless, and like, I, you know, seven foot in length doesn't matter. I'm going right at your chest, you know, going up. And that's, I, I always had that in me. And I think it's, I don't know if it's lacking nowadays, whatever, but, you know, it's something that you need, especially if you're not, you know, seven foot running the floor like a deer jumping 40 inches off the ground. I didn't have that. You know, right. I'm not a big, big guy like that. But yeah. I think what really carried me to be able to play, you know, high level, uh, you know, high school, college, and then eventually professionally was, I always had that chip on my shoulder. Always, hmm. always, you know, I I went in there believing I was the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's helped me in the transition stage of my life too, outside of sports, doing other things. Mm-hmm. You know, just believing in yourself, not, you know, going into something not knowing, you know, if if it's going to be perfect, whatever. But just doing it. You know. And so I always hmm. always kept that with me, um, and it's helped me outside of basketball as well. Your gameplay at Syracuse then, I mean, especially coming off of a national championship, you know, you're coming in, you know, we were talking, you know, you're committing to, uh, to SU, you know, after seeing them play and that, you know, seeing that team play and, uh, you know, you're coming in and really making a, a statement on the team when there weren't a whole heck of a lot of other guys on the team uh, in your years there that were, you know, playing with the same tenacity that you were. 
in terms of that competitiveness. Yeah. You know, so when you're going into a game, you know, like I think uh, I'm not an athlete. I don't know if you could tell uh, or not. <laughs> you, but didn't use, you didn't try out for quarterback, right? You I didn't did. try out for quarterback. <laughs> I want to be a much better offensive lineman, right. oddly enough. Uh, and much to my father's chagrin. But um, so, you know, I'm not an athlete. That's one thing. My wife and I are not athletic people. Our children will probably never play Division One anything in their entire <laughs> lives. Uh, Which is all right. It's perfectly fine. That's fine. Yeah. Teach their own, right? So, but, uh, but when, I, when I think back of going into a game, even today going into a big situation, right? You know, business, whatever it is. I'm always thinking of like big, big picture, right? Like I'm going in thinking, all right, we need to win this game by 50 points or 10 points, whatever the case is. With that competitiveness that you have, are you going into a game thinking, all right, we're going to win by 10, we're going to win by 20, or are you, are you looking for that buzzer beater shot? I'm definitely, I, I want to win by 50 every time. It <laughs> makes it easier on me, right? I mean, you, you know, it's a lot of pressure to, you know, play in those situations where it's you're down two, down three, and you, you, you have to hit a shot. You have to hit a clutch shot. So I'd rather have it be where we're, you know, we got a comfortable lead going <laughs> yeah. into the, the, the final minutes. Um, but I think great players love those, those moments, those situations where, you know, you're down and, and you want to be the guy that the ball goes to and, and make a play. Um, early on, I think um, I was able to learn my freshman year from GMAC, yeah. you know, Jerry McNamara, who's, who's now obviously assistant up there. Um, you know, he, he had that clutch gene in him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my freshman year, I remember Big East tournament, four games in four days. Hmm. Uh, you know, he hits a big shot every single one. Yeah. Or he makes a, makes a play in every single one. Um, so, you know, that, that, you know, I already had that in me, but you know, seeing him and, and playing in the backcourt with him, being his partner, um, you know, it, it, it had an effect on me as well. Yeah. You know, it, it made me want to do the same thing and step up in, in those type of moments and, and be that type of leader. Um, and I think I was able to do that, you know, through my career. And, and then, you know, another backcourt mate I had is Johnny Flynn, the same yeah. type. Of, I mean, I'm, you talk about dog. That was he was on another level. And now add a 46 inch vertical, <laughs> you know, quick like a cat, you know. So, you know, he, he he was a special player. So I was fortunate enough to play with some guys who had that same mindset, the same mentality. Um, but every game we go in and we go in believing that we're going to win. Yeah. You know, obviously the coaches they'll. Uh, they prepare us and, and have the scout, and, and we have to be aware of, you know, what players can do, their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, we're going in there and we're playing. Yeah. You know, we're playing ball and we're playing as hard as we can. And the biggest thing for me, I, you know, I, I always, you know, was going to go out there and compete as hard as I can. Give, give myself a chance. Give our team a chance. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know we're, maybe not make every shot, you know, make the right play every single time, but... You know, I'm, I'm going to bust my ass and make sure I get back on D or, or make sure I'm talking and, and keeping guys engaged. So, um, yeah, just, just knowing and believing in yourself each and every game that you go into. I've always thought, I've thought about this a lot with, um, this is a terrible example, but uh, like Justin Bieber. Remember Justin, when Justin Bieber was running a full out there? Singer. Yeah, unbelievable singer. <laughs> Throwing water balloons at cops and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right? he said. <laughs> but I remember, you know, I'm, I'm hearing these stories and I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're so uh, poised to focus on the, the, build, the climb to the top. You know, we're focused on how to make the money, how to get the career, how to build the business. And there's so little education or training on what to do when you get there, how to act, you know, how do you yeah. overcome like that uh, nervousness, things, whatever it is, the stress. But it sounds like you were kind of ready for that. I mean, you're in middle school shooting a hundred, you know, in a row with a crowd watching you. So yeah. what was that transition like when you're walking into the dome? Cause you're young. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're, you know, what, 18, 19 years old right. coming on to, Massive, massive stage. Well, I was fortunate enough early, like to play at Oak Hill, where we were going all over the country. You yeah. know, we're playing against you know the best of the best. You know, early. So I was, you know, I was coming from high school playing against the best players in, in the country. You know, now I'm just going on to another stage where it's the best players and they're older than me. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> but um, you know, I was prepared for that because I love to do it. Yeah. You know, I think that's with with anything. Like I, I love to play basketball. I wasn't mm -hmm. worried about if he was saying I wasn't good or. I didn't do this right. Yeah. It, I love to play, man. Like, I still love to play, <laughs> you know? And, and, and with anything, you have to have a passion or else it's going to burn out. Yeah. You know, you could chase money, you could do all that, but if you don't love to do it, it's not going to work out. Like, that's what I really figured out. You know, you have to find that passion and what you really love and everything else will come together. Yeah. You know, you'll start to find those opportunities and those different doors opening up if you, if you love what you do because people feel that and they feel that passion, yeah. you know, and it kind of, they want to help out or they want to do something else that, 
you know, you inspired and motivated them just by, you know, your energy, you know, bringing that different energy and that passion. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of people out here who are doing stuff that they don't really want to do. Right. You know, so I, I'm just blessed to be able from an early age, like I said, to really find what I love. Yeah. You know, I've never had a regular job in my life. <laughs> Ever. Never worked at McDonald's, never worked at gas station, nothing. Yeah. I played basketball my whole life. And I was now I was lucky enough to um, hmm. be able to get paid for it, travel. And yeah. now once all those things happen, now you're you have different opportunities come about. And now we're doing media. Now I get to talk about basketball. Right. Now, shit, now, that's the best thing. I, now I, I'm not playing. Shit, I, let me sit down here and just talk about it. Talk, right. talk shit about these guys playing, you know? So uh, that's what it is, passion. You have to be passionate about uh, what you do. Um, and, and that's kind of how different opportunities arise and, and how you get through those ups and downs. Yeah. Those are, those are going to happen. Right. You're going to have adversity. If you're not, if you're not, something's not wrong. You're not doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you're not, you're not, you know, going big enough or you're not, you know, reaching high enough, whatever it is. Hmm. So that passion gets you through those ups and downs. What was it like? So, you know, you're going from, uh, you know, you've got the injury or junior year, right? You're yeah. coming back to, from that. Um, and, uh, you know, you're committing to the draft, and then you're going to the European League, yeah. right? It's been a lot of years there. I've got some friends, happiest, two of the happiest guys I ever know, spent about 10 years over in the European League, man. Yeah. I mean, getting the, paid to play basketball and live and travel around Europe, I've never met two happier people in my entire life than yeah. those two guys. I mean, so what's that like over there? Like, what's the, is there a shock to your system of like, is it a different culture in terms of basketball over there versus playing college ball here? Yeah, so we'll go back to the injury. Uh, I tore my ACL. Obviously, that was the first big injury I ever had. So we talked about adversity. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the seven months. I'm rehabbing twice a day, going through that, and then, you know, having to come back and believe back in my in my knee. It's healthy enough to go where I was at, where yeah. I was playing at, the level where I was playing. So, you know, that's a, a mental step right there. So doing that, you know, coming back, playing well, and then, like you said, um, going through another mental step because, you know, I entered the draft. I yeah. still had one year. But I also had I had my girls, you know. Yeah. So it's like, ah, what am I do? I gotta let me go make some money. Uh, I had a solid career, um, I enjoyed it. But it's time to it's time to go take care of my family, you yeah. know. So did that, didn't get drafted, upset about that, you know. And shit happens, whatever, you right. know. Um, and then yeah, we go to go overseas. My first my first place overseas I went was so I played in the G League first. Yeah. Um, and Detro then after draft, the, was it Detroit? It was uh it was um. Who was it? My first one was. Damn it, who was it? I want to say Reno. Okay. I was in Reno and Idaho a little bit, um, but didn't didn't work out there. Go to New Zealand. I signed yeah. with a team over in New Zealand. It's like a four or five month league. Unbelievable hmm. country. I'm talking about. Right. I live there right now. I'll go there right now. Uh, <laughs> New Zealand, unbelievable. So just nice people, laid back. Hmm. Um, you know, it was beautiful, and and we won the championship over there. Yeah. Did my thing. Now, is this right? So you're, I forget the name of the team, the team names, but you're playing for one team mm -hmm. and four or five games in, they, they trade you, right? So, yeah, that, so it was the, I go over there, Wakato, Pistons, yeah. uh, we're 7-0. and Yeah. I'm averaging like 29, first in the league. Have an incident, we go out, have an incident. Yeah. Uh, my friend got into it, whatever, and then I get in the middle of it. <laughs> you know, just, just yeah. being stupid, right? But the next team you go to. Yeah, get the next time. So, boom, phone call. My agent hits the Wellington Saints. Shit, better city. <laughs> it's the capital. So, I'm like, damn, it, unbelievable city. Go there, best team in the league, really. Yeah. So, ended up going there, doing great, um, you know, winning the championship, beating the team that cut me yeah. or that released me in the championship. <laughs> so, hey, you know what I mean? But uh, How does that make you? I mean, I mean, so what, you're, what, 22, 21, 22 around that yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, something, like, yeah, around there. And was, What do you, I mean, how does that make you feel? It was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, to, you know, win my first, you know, professional championship, yeah. you know, overseas in an unbelievable country. And then I was able to, you know, play well enough to sign in the Australian League that yeah. next season, go to Austra live in Melbourne hmm. for seven months. Um, and then after that, I went to Turkey. But, I mean, those two countries to start off, yeah. Australia, New Zealand, two of the best places in the world. I got to live in Melbourne. They say Melbourne's like a top four place to live in the world. Oh, wow. You know, and it's, I got to live there for like seven months. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I've been, my travels took me, you know, Ukraine, uh, Turkey, Israel, hmm. you know, Russia, uh, Italy. Where else was I at? 
uh, yeah, a few other countries, and I, I got paid to play ball. That's amazing. You know? um, obviously, the, you know, with my kids growing up and, and getting older, yeah. um, that's why I decided to come back. But yeah. during those times, man, oh, just I think it, it opens your mind to different things when you're going over, diff experiencing different cultures, eating different foods. Yeah. You know, I'm in Ukraine. People are, can't even, I'm asked to try to get water. She can't even understand what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> like it's, I was in a little city in Ukraine. So it was, mm. it was like all Russian, you know, all Russian television. Mm. You know, they're not speaking any English. They're not trying to <laughs> adapt you either. Right. Right? No, you got to <laughs> adapt to us. So it was, it, it was cool, man. It was, it was awesome just, just to experience those, you know, those different countries. What's the difference playing ball over there versus coming from Syracuse and playing college ball? It, it's more physical, more half court. Obviously, you know, we have more athletes over here. Yeah. You know, we're getting up and down a little bit. It's more uh, tactical, I guess you'd say. Mm. You, you, you have more plays run. You set more screens because they mm. need that to get themselves open. Yeah. You know, and, and the Americans really make up, uh, you know, I guess the talent, you would say, overseas, unless you're playing in the Euro League in, in, in those countries. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, basketball is basketball, right? You, yeah. You're going to go through your, your politics and you're getting paid now. So, right. um, you know, and, and then you have your local. So you go through stuff like it with anything. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was, it was at the end of the day, it was basketball and um, a hell of an experience. Is it hard getting used to the zone? And uh, at first it was, but then now I know it like the back of my hand. <laughs> I, I could tell you, I could tell you, everyone in here how to play it, and, and you'd be good at it. You know, so I, it, it takes time. So many people, especially nowadays, especially today, everybody's everybody's complaining about SU everything right now, and they're all saying every time I, every time I look at Facebook or I go and read an article after after a game, especially after a loss, they're like, it's time we got to get rid of the zone. We got to get rid of the zone, but. Just what we are, man. You know what? I, I, we were talking about it on, on my radio show earlier today. And, you know, Coach Bayheim has been doing it for 55 years. You know, and it, it, obviously in the recent years, you know, we struggled during the regular season, but it seems to always work out towards the end. We make that little run. Yeah. Um, and we're spoiled, man. We're spoiled as Syracuse <laughs> fans. Like, we never had a losing season. Like, he, we've yeah. had the same coach for – any player, every single player. I don't care. You go to Derek Cohen, Billy Owens, myself. Yeah. They've had the same. So we have that commonality. So you got to think about how special that is, too. Hmm. You know, like yeah. I, I see Derek Coleman and he's treating me like I play with him. Hmm. Billy Owens, same thing. Sherman Douglas. Wow. You know, so it's unique what Syracuse has. Yeah. And, and they should be, because when he's gone, they're going to be like, damn, I wish he was here. Yeah. You know, and, and then, yeah, every, it's, it's different. Recruiting is different. You know, personnel is different. So some, some years in the zone we had. 6'11", 6, 6'10", 6, 6, 6, in the back who can move and yeah. cover space. They can make a mistake and still be there. Hmm. You know, maybe this year we don't have those type of athletes to, to where the zone is different and we got to, you know, uh, change it up a little bit or adjust yeah. a little bit. But that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> you know, so it, it, the zone's been working for this long. Um, and, and, and this year isn't the year to change the man. Trust me. No. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, it's, you know, Coach Beheim is, is a Hall of Famer for a reason. Um, and, and the zone works, and until he's gone, and that's when he says he's gone. Yeah, he, you know he's gonna. That's up to him. Right. He's earned that. He's earned that right. You know. So, um, and, and again, when he's gone, I think people will be, you know, uh, disappointed that he's not there. Without a doubt, I think about the volatility in the football team and that organization, and I couldn't imagine as a fan having that in the basketball program. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's rare nowadays right yeah. in, in college basketball to have any type of stability right you know there seems like they're just going through the coaches and, and now with the uh, with the transfer portal with the kids it's yeah. like you know you run into it oh, I'm not playing I'm leaving right away right. like damn like when, when you're done playing ball like you you're gonna have to figure it out yeah you're gonna f run into some stuff yeah you know I mean it, it's different now but it's just I, I think it's um yeah, it was tough, man. It's it, I think it's teaching kids the wrong thing. You know yeah. what I mean? What's some what's a quality you look for in somebody coming from your history of, you know, team sports, your history of, you know, everything with SU. Oh, you know, what's what's a quality that you look for as a leader and somebody else where you're saying if if I can find somebody that has that thing, I know I I can help them be successful. A guy who competes, like that's it. Like you're going to have super talented guys. Um, you're going to have not so super talented guys who can, who are athletes who are not 
what separates you know guys uh, is how hard they compete mm. you know what type of energy that they bring especially now being a player and coaching at the division one level just seeing that like mm. you see guys who are super talented but they're lazy they don't want to buy in you don't want to coach that mm. you don't want to deal with that shit. you see all that talent and then you don't even fucking want to use it you, yeah. know, you, you just want to waste it you know you i want that guy who's going to compete hard every single time who's going to mm. come in and not make an excuse yeah, it makes it easier on me. Right. But you making it easier on yourself too. For sure. Knowing that the game of basketball is, is ups and downs. Same with life. That's why that's why it's so awesome to be a part part of sports. Excuse me, uh, because it has so many life lessons in it. You know, you you have to work as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have to be able to uh, you know encourage and motivate and inspire other people to to get the best out of them. Yeah. You know, and and, and that's same with life. You got to do that if you if you want to, you know, be successful in whatever you it or you at least got to bring that to the table. You yeah. know. So for me a guy that's going to compete as hard as he can and bring that positive energy. That, that is what sets, you know, good teams from, from great teams, you know what I mean? Or mm. great teams from good teams. Those, having those guys in the locker room. So, uh, you know, late last year, you decide to put out this GoFundMe, help out small local businesses, independent mm. owned restaurants and business in the area. So what is it that you see where it's like, you know what, if anybody's going to step up and do something, it's me. Well, you know what? Everyone has like great ideas, right? But it, it don't mean it doesn't mean anything if you don't take action on it. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I wanted to start a while ago, you know, just doing stuff for the community that has supported me through through my ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You know, I messed up a lot when I was young. I learned a lot. Yeah. But they always had my back. You mm -hmm. know, whenever I went out, they were you know t to this day like I'm playing right now. You know, I've played in 15 years. Yeah. Shit, you know. So it's the community, man. Like, it, you know, it's special people. It's, 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 it's a special place to raise a family. Um, you know, whenever I put something out there, it's, it's all I do is, I, all I do is put it out there yeah. on, on social media. It, it's the community that really makes it come to life and makes it happen. I mean, we had a Thanksgiving dinner drive. But, you know, people are hitting me up and asking me, how can I volunteer? How can mm -hmm. I bring, you know, bring food or whatever? So I, I, wanted, I wanted to be able to help out the community when they really needed it. Yeah. You know, and they did. And I know I was I'm blessed to be able to have a platform that Syracuse basketball game to where I can get that out and I can get it to reach a little a little bit more, you know, than maybe the average person. So um, and that's what we, during COVID when when the businesses were going through that. Man, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to raise twenty five thousand and, and it would hmm. go fund me. He did it within like three days, yeah. you know, four days. And then, you know, all right, well, shit, let's do, let's do 50, you know, let's do, let's do, you know, 45, 50s. A week goes by a couple of weeks, 50, you yeah. know, all right, so let's do 75. We're going to do 75 and I want to get it out because I wanted to get it out quick. You know, a month goes by, we raise, I think it was almost 77,000. Um, and, and then we were able to give that out to almost like 16, 16 to 18 businesses, I believe. Yeah. Um, but again, and it's not something that's going to save them, right? But it's just like. It's almost like a gesture to where I'm like, I want to thank you guys for everything that, you know, all the support that you have gave me. And I got to, I'm in this community, so I want to be able to add value yeah. and, and, you know, help out the best I can. So, you know, that was kind of my idea. And, and, you know, again, with the help and support of the whole community, I mean, people were donating, you know, large amounts of money, you know, to, to be able to get that in one month. That's pretty quick, you know, 77,000. And, and then we are able to give that out. The feeling to be able to, you know, just help out, give them, give them the checks. Like it's, it's a feeling like it's, it's better than when you hit that shot and stand up on the table. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a you help somebody, you know, help their family, you know, and that's that's what it's about. One of the cool things about it is, you know, there's so many different uh, funds available for small businesses over the past you know year and a half. And a lot of the smaller ones who maybe didn't have the information or know how to get through the system, um, either didn't get approved and didn't get funds, or you know they got a significantly smaller fraction than some of the bigger spots. And uh, you know you're raising this money for them and going to the small ones. Yeah. You know you're going to them and giving them this check where, you know, it made such a difference. So we actually this past week I I hit up a bunch of those places. Oh sweet! Man. And uh, I got a little video we put together for I want to show you. There you go. So when we submitted our application to be considered for a grant from. Uh, Eric Diebendorf, uh, 
we didn't expect to be selected, and then it was quite a surprise when we were selected. And uh, we were very humbled by it because, you know, we're just a bunch of small businesses under one roof. And uh, so we went to great lengths to kind of think of ways in which we could benefit the customer and kind of have longevity in the use of the funds. So we hired a local fabricator, uh, Devin, um, out of Totelk Works. So he custom fabricated um, special lighting that's Wi-Fi and app based and built it into the columns in the lower level, which allows us to change the atmosphere and uh, kind of put attention on the center bay for when we have pop-up events. Um, always part of the plan to continue to offer these opportunities to local artists. And then we also use the money to get HEPA filters um, that we installed inside uh, the upper and lower version of Wildflowers so that we have uh, a safety um, COVID-related safety as well, and uh, we just were so uh, pleased to be able to take in this grant and utilize it to enhance the space. Well, there was wonderful impact actually, just because after Christmas, the business is always slowing down. So, uh, help with uh, support the employees and that was the most important for me, for them to have enough money to support their family also. So what he did was a really wonderful. The money impacted my business. Um, it helped me a lot with getting supplies that I needed to run my online studio. So I do a lot of online yoga classes and I actually bought a tablet <laughs> that I needed. So it's my baby, I carry it around everywhere and I needed it. I, I had this old beat up Microsoft laptop that wouldn't get on Zoom some days and it would some other days. So, you know, just purchasing the tablet and helping me with my rent that month was extremely impactful and it gave me the motivation that I needed to keep going and um, do better in my business. Little mom and pop stores are, are really, really, really hurting. And uh, for you to be able to go out there and, and get us uh, the kind of money you did, uh, I, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, it was, uh, it came at a time that uh, was really, really helpful. So, you know, it's, uh, I wish there's more people like you out there. And then I want to thank you not from me also, but from people who he supported my restaurant uh, to be very generous and He's looked like one in a million to come up with the idea and the way where he raised the money and support us. That was a wonderful, and especially the local businesses and small businesses. Um, I want to say very thank you, thank you very much. And I uh, feel very lucky and privileged to be able to uh, be one of the selected. And we got to really thank Eric for you know going hard outside of the paint during the pandemic and helping small businesses out. So keep, keep up the good work. Michael was pretty happy about that yeah, last man, comment. Yeah, that's made my eyes water and all that, <laughs> man. That's special, man, for real. That's, that's what it's about, though. Like, just to hear that type of stuff right there, like, it does, it does make me emotional, and I blame my mom because she's the same <laughs> way. But, um, I mean, that, that's, what, that's what it is. That's what life is at the end of the day, you know? Like, you want to be able to help other people when they're in need and, and, and just, you know, just be able to like motivate, inspire people to do better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and try to do something with their lives. Because it's hard out here, man. Like yeah. it's hard. People, you know, day to day, you don't know what people are going through mentally. You know, I, I go through it. You know, everybody right. goes through it, you know. So uh, some people just deal with it better, right? So if I if I can, uh, you know, help somebody out, inspire somebody to, to take that next step or, or do something better, help somebody out, that's what I want to do. But what you did with that fund, that GoFundMe, getting that money into these uh, small businesses and restaurants, you know, that made such an impact in the community. And, um, you know, like I said, a time when these small places, they don't know how they're getting through it. They don't have anybody in their corner telling them how to get through it. Mm -hmm. They don't know where the money is coming from, but they just know that they have this, got to pay the staff, got to do this. For you to be able to use your platform and get this big group of people in the city together to donate to them and then distributing those funds. Such a big deal for Syracuse. So 
I appreciate it. That's, again, like, it's, I do all this stuff. I, I try to put it out there so people can see it, and then hopefully somebody else wants to do the same thing. That's kind of what, you know, that's why it's, it's out there. So, because I want other people to do because they can. You know, other athletes can do the same thing, you know, in, in their community right here. I mean, I, I know one of my guys, you know, he was just like, you know what, I'm going to start doing that too. He, hmm. So he starts collecting shoes and giving it to kids, in, you know, in the inner city who, who, awesome. who need that. Or, or he just had a toy, toy drive over at hmm. Pastime. So, like, though. That's what you really want, you know what I mean? Because you could only do so much as, as one individual, yeah. but you want to be able to try to get everybody else on board. Now, now you got you got something going. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, Eric, thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate you having me.